question is that the motion be agreed to. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Christopher Finlayson. Madam Speaker, uh, on behalf of the National Opposition, uh, I indicate that we will be supporting this legislation with great pleasure. Uh, it was uh, tremendous to be at Teoti College on 26 September 2015 to sign the deed of settlement, and I welcome to the gallery today some representatives of uh, Teoti College, and about which I'll say something in a short time. It's a great college, almost as great as Hatu Paura. Um, <laughs> one of um, my, gy my gym instructor, who's an old boy of Hatu Power, asked me to drop that into my speech, and I have obliged. <laughs> uh, there are a couple of points I want to make. The first uh, is to emphasise what the Minister said, how important it is for people to read the facts. And the facts are set out in the bill and form an important part of the uh, apology, uh, because what happened here, it wasn't Ropatu, but it was a very serious breach of the treaty and huge tracts of land across the magnificent Heratonga Plains were lost. And that is why the settlement is such a significant settlement. And that's why uh, the Crown really has to do its very best to make sure in a post-settlement world uh, that this settlement is successful. Can I uh, acknowledge, uh, as the Minister has, the tremendous contribution uh, of the negotiators? Time and time again, I've said in this House that to be a negotiator uh, on behalf of an iwi in its treaty settlement negotiations requires huge courage and commitment, and that was certainly the case here. Because the negotiators are people who work on their day job, and then at the end of the day, instead of going home and resting, are called to meetings to deal with the uh, negotiations, uh, and that applies also over the weekend. And the young folk here who are witnessing this third reading should take some time to thank uh, people uh, within the tribal leadership for their contribution uh, to the negotiations because what they did, as I said, has required great courage and commitment. And in any treaty settlement, negotiators have to deal with important mandate issues. Uh, because Heratonga Tamatia was very well organised, mandate disputes here uh, were minimal but nonetheless they can be very trying and time-consuming uh, pieces of work uh, and it can really be very testing for negotiators. So they had to deal with that and they did it well. Uh, inevitably there are going to be overlapping claims and the negotiators dealt with those issues very well. Uh, and above all, uh, they have to recognise uh, and accept that uh, what is offered is something that's bankable uh, for the iwi. And I always remember the final stages of the Ngāti Perot negotiation when my old friend Apirana Mahawika got up at the crack of dawn and wandered around Wellington wondering whether he would initial the deed of settlement. Was it an appropriate settlement? What would Ngāta uh, have said about it? Uh, and so those are the kinds of huge issues that weigh on the negotiators as they come to decide whether to accept the deed of settlement. And that is why to acknowledge the negotiators is not a formulaic recitation uh, of thanks uh, or a formulaic acknowledgement, but a sincere tribute to them uh, for their outstanding contribution. The Minister finished his speech by saying, as I have said in the past, today marks the beginning of a new relationship. And he's absolutely correct. Uh, but whether or not these settlements succeed is dependent on how the Crown reacts. Iwi and their members never forget. The Crown all too often forgets. Uh, and so these settlements will be successful if the Crown acknowledges and acts on the basis uh, that it is a new day, a new relationship, uh, a relationship based on uh, equals, not paternalism. 
Earlier this week, I was asked a number of questions by journalists um, about uh, a certain settlement where there are, are some issues that have arisen, uh, and they said to me, oh, should the minister be taking a closer look uh, at it and so on? Uh, these are funds that were provided uh, by the, uh, the government. Uh, and the questions themselves seem to me to suggest that there's still an understanding out there, a feeling out there, uh, that the relationship between the Crown and Iwi is paternalistic. Well, it's not. And when there's a settlement, uh, then the relationship does change, uh, and Iwi uh, have the resources to grow and develop uh, their area, uh, and it's not for the Crown to be adopting some kind of overlord or paternalistic relationship toward them. Uh, and so, I always, when it comes to treaty settlements, in the third reading, cross my fingers and hope for the best that the Crown won't let the side down. And I'm always mindful, and uh, the member for Titai Hararu knows this, of what happened with Ngāti Apa, that they'd been told uh, during negotiations uh, with Michael Cullen uh, that a certain piece of land uh, was not available for settlement because it was a strategic piece of land, and then a couple of years after the settlement, it was put on the market. And that's the kind of thing that destroys trust uh, and does need to be avoided at all times. There are two points that the committee uh, was concerned with and I want to refer to, uh, and that is, uh, well, the first one deals with the TOT College Glasgow leases, something that I am very personally interested in, because I know the contribution that this great college has made to New Zealand, and those leases, to put it bluntly, are an abomination, uh, and there needs to be a resolution of them for the future. Uh, this college uh, has produced some outstanding people over the years, and just uh, to go through a few of them, Moana Nui Akiwa Narimu, the soldier of the Maori Battalion who was awarded the VC, in 1943. The great Tarangi Sir Peter Buck, who was uh, a member of parliament for Northern Māori. Sir Howard Morrison, Sir Sidney Mead, uh, the great Sir Aperana Nata, a good nat, who was the MP for Eastern Māori for many, many years, an outstanding minister of Māori affairs. Sir Maui Pomare, Sir Ma they hate it when we say these things. Uh, Sir Maui Pomare, another great nat, who was the member for Western Māori and Minister of Health. Sir Peter Sharples, who wasn't a great nat, but he was a great guy. <laughs> and is a great guy. Uh, and uh, a person I worked with very closely when he was Minister of Māori Affairs, co-leader of the Māori Party. He's the one who launched the reforms of Tuturi Whenua, uh, which the Labour Party has ditched, and shame on them. Uh, William Brown Ture. Archbishop and Primate of the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, w uh, Piriwepu, Norm Hewitt, you've got to get the, uh, the All Blacks in there, Manu Bennett, uh, uh, so many others, uh, Madam Speaker. This is a school that should be flourishing, and it's not flourishing because of those hideous Glasgow leases. So I hope that over the next little period, we will, as a parliament, be able to look at that issue because it does need to be resolved. And the second issue relates to the Hawke's Bay Regional Planning Committee. There have been some concerns uh, about that. Look, it's early days, but I strongly say to all iwi who are involved with the Hawke's Bay Regional Planning Committee, get involved in it. It is going to take time to bed in. It was the subject of a very careful negotiation led by Dame Fran Wilde when she was negotiating the Ngāti Pahuera settlement. It is the right model for the Hawke's Bay. There are going to be teething problems because you know, the New Jerusalem doesn't arrive in five minutes, but it's worth working hard on, uh, and uh, I am sure that if everyone does their bit, that's the model that will work very well for the Hawke's Bay. So in conclusion, it's been great to work uh, with Heratonga Tamatia over the years. Uh, they have got some wonderful, wonderful people uh, who have been involved uh, in the uh, uh, iwi for such a long time. The one person I particularly uh, want to mention is Liz Munro, uh, who is a good friend of mine. 
uh, and uh, she and I worked together in a law firm many years ago. Uh, with the kind of leadership that Hera Tonga Tamatia has, I believe it's going to go from strength to strength, uh, and so I too commend the bill to the House. Um, Are you going for the call? Are you seeking uh, the Madam call? Chair. I call Reno Tilikatane. Uh, tēnā koe, uh, tēnā koe, Madam Chair. Uh,